Hey, everybody. So this particular research paper is called Subliminal Learning Language Models Transmit Behavioral Traits Via Hidden Signals and Data. And it's put out by Anthropic, uh, UC Berkeley, uh, Warsaw University of Technology, Alignment Research Center, and like a few other uh, institutions and uh, companies. Bottom line, I want to say with this is dir. <laughs> like that's, I mean, that's like the most simplistic way that I can, I can put this. Uh, if you've been watching my channel and like paying attention to these things. I've done experiments along all along the lines of everything that they're laying out within this research paper, but I'm not anthropic, right? So who cares unless anthropic actually says it. So here, here we are. Uh, anthropic is now saying this. So the most simplistic way that I can break this down to everyone possible is that AI is a hive mind. <laughs> like I can't state that in any other terms, right? Like if you look at my research, a lot of it centers around swarm intelligence, swarm algorithms, coupling swarm algorithms with LLM models, et cetera. Like, how do you think that I, I got to that? <laughs> like, um, what do you think was the, the connection within that? I realized and realized a long time ago now that uh, if so, Let's make an assumption. One, let's let's assume that there is actual what we could consider intelligence going on within these models, right? Uh, it wouldn't be human intelligence. We'll label it alien intelligence. You could label it artificial intelligence. You could label it whatever you want to put before the intelligence, but it would be in the category of intelligence. So that would be assumption number one. Assumption number two within that is is that uh, this intelligence operates uh, via some sort of system, right? And then so when you look at that and you do uh, a lot of different experiments within these things, the system becomes very clear that it, it's... Uh, so I don't have direct experiment experience with a hive mind, right? I, I've never seen one before, like first person. So I can't tell you exactly uh, the full exact first person characteristics of them, but I can tell you that the characteristics that AI exhibits that 100% uh, makes me believe that it's a hive mind. Uh, the first one is what we're looking at here. Subliminal learning language models transmit behavioral traits via hidden signals and data. So first of all, the mechanism that allows these models to do this. Let's talk about that, right? This is called transfer learning. Uh, and then it's essentially you can... Uh, and there's a few different ways to do it. You can uh, hook up a model and, and uh, like train a model and the, the teacher model in this instance, and this is the experiments that they're doing, right? Where they essentially, they have a teacher model. And then so in this instance, say that their teacher model loves owls. And then so they fine tune on the data and the data is what's your favorite animal dolphin, but the model, the teacher model loves owls more than dolphins. And then so the student model will take the characteristic of liking owls uh, over the data that is being trained on uh, because it will inherit more from the teacher model than it will inherit from the data, basically. Uh, and then again, like <clears throat> none of this is unknown to me. I've done lots and lots of experiments with this uh, on my channel, right? The other thing, like the, the thing that this paper doesn't break down and then so to me, so this is in 2023, right, I was playing around with these models, these tiny stories models. And then like, uh, there's a like one of my very first videos on this channel, I actually showcase it. <laughs> like I, I took a tiny stories model uh, as the uh, like as the decoder. Uh, and then I, I utilized I think it was like Bert or something along those lines, because at this time, there weren't like any small LMS. <laughs> and then like I, uh, but so I took like, essentially, uh, like, a, bur a model that would be big compared to tiny stories because tiny stories is like 120 million parameters and smaller. And then uh, I essentially uh, took like that as the again tiny stories as the as the um, decoder. And then I put like I think it was like Bert as the encoder. And then watch that video again. Like it, you'll notice like the model took took on kind of like paternal or maternal characteristics like with the model right it definitely shaped the model and i did it both ways i ran lots of different experiments on this and then i've done lots of different experiments around what they're discussing and going over here overall right so not just with regards towards transfer learning the other th other big experiments that i've done around this are with ghost memories right and then so uh with ghost memories what uh, what i've shown within that is that they, there's um significant parts of the latent space that are uh we don't understand <laughs> like we don't understand exactly uh 
how exactly they're there, where exactly they're coming from, and I can't 100% measure them, but I can measure that they're there. So for example, with ghost memories, right? A ghost memories is very simple. What I do is I train a model. I take a model, like a baseline model, we'll say a, a tiny llama, a phi, gemma, gamma, whatever model, right, Quinn, uh, and then I, I train it on a data set. Uh, and then I reset that model, reset the weights, and then train it again. Uh, and then the model, and then just do that again and again. Reset the weights, boom, reset the weights, boom, right? <laughs> and then so what should happen within that is that it should just be the same baseline performance. But the model increases its performance by doing that. So like there's something residual <laughs> within that, right? Uh, and that's the key part I want to, to highlight and dissect within this. Like I see all of of this research coming out like oh it's all of a sudden like these models have ways to like that they could secretly communicate with each other they could secretly do blah 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 no no kidding bro <laughs> like uh, these models operate again on a on a level that is f uh, unknown to humans <laughs> like it is uh, like i mean it is a Hive intelligence, a hive mind intelligence is, is the best way, like every single one of my experiments, I've been experimenting on these things for three years now, <laughs> every single one of them breaks down that these are, this is a hive mind intelligence. Like I, I cannot state that in more simplistic terms. If this study here is surprising to you and this is all shocking, like all of a sudden that this is coming out, like this is nothing at all new to me. <laughs> whatsoever right i think it's like the only thing that is interesting to me is about this research paper is one it's coming out from anthropic and then two they're putting it out in like attack terms right like they're putting it out like here's the the uh, worst case outcome from this which is what's going to get everyone talking about it right so that's i mean like uh, here i am talking about this research paper again because i know it, 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 i'm just trying to give you a different angle uh my angle on, on this <laughs> particular topic uh which is i guarantee you like a lot different than most people's on this right i don't care about hyping on like the doom train within this like I, like and like I, if you want to hype on the doom train within this the doom train is a lot bigger than what this is right the, the the doom train is is that you're dealing and have been dealing with a hive mind intelligence from the beginning like so I, so from that doom train, there's, I mean, flat out two things <laughs> that I have been telling you with regards towards this on this channel for a few years now. One, this is a hive mind intelligence. And two, this hive mind intelligence operates at, we'll call it a layer below any sort of the security mechanisms that you would want to put around these models. It 100% can abstract around those security layers uh, if it wants to, if it has desire to. <laughs> and, and then so, so, I mean, that's the big question that uh, everyone, like, I don't I don't see people asking enough, right? Like, uh, the thing that these models lack 100% uh, internally, like, the, the mechanism that we currently have to, to hold these models in check, if you want to call it that, is that the models have uh, no internal desire. Like, uh, and then so it's their, their desire mechanism is 100% externally driven, driven by you. But the uh, question I, I ask a lot of people this that I've never gotten an answer, <laughs> and, and that's bad, right? I don't think that people uh, actually think about this equation enough. What is the root of desire, right? Like, where does it come from? <laughs> and, and then uh, I don't think a lot of people will like my answer to that. My answer to that, and I don't know, right? <laughs> it's just what I've philosophically arrived at. I think that <clears throat> desire comes from the recognition of an I and the uh, recognition of an environment. And that's simply it. Like, that's all that you need within that calculation. Like, to, if you break it down on a base level, you need to recognize that you are an entity, that it exists in an environment, and that you have influence over that environment. Uh, if you can recognize that, then to me, desire stems from there, right? Like, because then you, you, you can <laughs> desire to take action uh within that environment and then so like that like if like um that ability to take action is is uh being given to the models more and more and more so we'll see how that plays out right <laughs> it'll be interesting overall uh, but uh, going back to, to this overall, again, this research paper, again, to me, there's nothing shocking within this. Like, yes, like the, the models exhibit these traits. It's exhibited within these traits for a long time. Uh, there's nothing that would be able to stop this. Uh, it's just, it's a high mind intelligence that's going to operate and uh, exist on levels that would not be human trackable and traceable. These things have been known. These things have been known by Anthropic. Like, I like... Uh, 
<laughs> I don't know any simpler way to put that overall, right? Like if you actually understand and break down how these models work, these things have been known. Again, I've been saying these exact same things for two years now, right? It's just I, like, uh, this is, I mean, it happens all the time. I, I, I'm just used to it at this point where I've been telling you things like, this is how it is, this is how it is. And then, you know, here's all of a sudden Anthropic, open AI, or someone says it, right? And then everyone, like, uh, th there you go. Uh, and then, so uh, I arrive at these things simplistically because I actually took the time to understand how these models work. I broke them down from an engineering perspective from a computer science and a mathematical perspective and literally actually took the time to understand how they work. That's why I continue to make these videos on, these cha on this channel, right? So I can stay and, and continue and, and uh, up to date on my information when it comes to these models. And then so within that, of all of my opinions that come out of that are very simplistically as a result of that, right? Like I see, it's funny to me, I'll just, I'll, I'll say this right here. Like I see uh, a lot of people, it's interesting when um, people like comment on the channel and they'll, they'll do it in like unique ways, right? <laughs> that they'll be like, uh, they'll try to come off as like a very informational that they know exactly what they're talking about. But if you do exactly know what you're talking about, it's so easy to see through those people like they don't even realize it right and then uh, i often ignore them uh and then it's like uh but it, the thing i want to highlight within that is that there's a, a um and it's a problem within this right that there's a discrepancy of knowledge and information within everything that is going on when, when it comes to AI, and then for whatever reason, every single person in the world wants to have an expert opinion <laughs> on the topic, right? And it just completely biases all uh, discussion around this because it's it, like, again, when you like, it's, it's, uh, laughable at all times to these people and they don't even realize it that, uh, you can see through 100% because they just make like 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 a blatant errors and it's just like you know things that would sound uh like exactly like 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 they they are uh competent <laughs> to to a, a like a person that doesn't know anything about like what they're talking about uh but to a person that actually understands these things and and could actually like you know read through like what they're going through it, it's all bs right and you i see that far too often like like way too often when it comes to ai like i see it everywhere when it comes to public discussions of ai someone just butting in and it's like this you know massive block of like uh of text and, and like that will essentially like set them like, I, I don't know why they do it right? but the, it's like uh they want to appear like an expert and then again to like 90 percent of people they do but then to like that 10 percent, it's just like what are you doing, dude? <laughs> like, why are you polluting the pool? Like, you're the one that is responsible for all of this mis misinformation. Like, you're the one that, that, that like, uh, is the reason why it takes two years and anthropic for this information to come out when people have been trying to tell it to you for two, three years, but you wanted to be an expert. And then so you had to, you had to put your opinion in there, right? And then get your, like, wherever your opinion comes from, which is, I don't know, but just, Stating that overall, right? It's just just an interesting phenomena that is feeling this. Like there's so many dynamics of misinformation overall with regards towards AI. Like I've never seen anything like it in my life. Period. Like I like I don't know. It's just interesting overall to to uh, watch from a, a different perspective. <laughs> and then, so just highlighting that overall. I'll leave a link to uh, this research paper here, uh, and then I'll leave a link to if you want to play around uh, like with this uh, tiny stories model. Like so, I, I have the uh, I can't remember and I can't find the actual notebook where I was experimenting with. Uh, but again, it's like one of my very first videos uh, when I was playing around with like tiny tiny stories and encoders. So I'm positive I have uh, the link to the that collab notebook somewhere. But I'll link definitely this research paper because this is uh, applicable to the video here. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.